Help Save Our World Speak, number 80. Be careful what you wish for. Becoming a great guide and teacher begins with self-mastery. Mastering your life and states of consciousness. Developing your life skills that improve your life and your states of consciousness. Hello, I'm Dennis Moore, your host for the next hour. Welcome to our 80th Help Save Our World Speak online speakers meeting, where we are changing the conversation to change our world. These meetings are based on my book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance, The Quest for the Truth, Change and Transformation. Our vision is to create a love-based, happy, healthy, and sustainable future for all life on Mother Earth. We believe that the only way to help save our world is to empower you with the truth, knowledge, skills, and wisdom you need to change your life so you can help us help save our world. We cannot do this alone. That's why we are empowering you to join us. So together, we make a meaningful difference in our world and create a magical future for our children and all life on our home planet, Mother Earth. Let's begin with introductions, Alex. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm here to help try and save the world. Thank you, Alex. Brendan? Hi, I'm Brendan. I am part of this group to, number one, help try and save our world, which we will come right in doing that I can guarantee if everybody participates, of course. And I am also part of this group because I believe in changing myself to better the lives of the people around me. Excellent. Thank you, Brennan. Beware, you might get what you ask for. Be careful of what you think, focus on, and say, because you might just get what you ask for. Or said differently, choose wisely and precisely what you wish for, and then speak it into the world and create a vision board if you want, and it will more than likely become your reality. I suggest you speak naturally from your best knowledge, awareness, and consciousness of the truth. Doing so, you're transmitting your best intent outwards from your being which is your best expression of your best life, best alignment, best wishes, and best choices based on your best vision of the future you would like to bring into reality. In doing so, you're sending it outwards into the universe, so you'll naturally receive what you envision, desire, and ask for. Within reason, of course, in some form or other, because it seldom comes from the universe or just pitches up on your doorstep in the form you precisely envision, or the more precisely envision it, the better it will, the more likely it will come in the form that you thought of it. You see, universal conscious energy will naturally align with the magnetism of your intent and give you what you ask for and multiply its effects with much more radiant patterns of energy to help you create your happy, healthy, and sustainable future, heal you, and help save our world through the process. To me, that's a wow, inspirational, intuitive gift of realization. These awakening insights are sewing it all together for me. Now, the first thing I've said is looking at your intent. But on a macro societal level, our human worldwide intent right now is to make the rich richer at no matter what the cost to our world. And that is what we have got. If our worldwide intent or societal intent is to create a fair, happy, healthy, and sustainable future, 
then that is what we will create and get. If our intent is to create sustainable teaching eco-villages around the world, and we maintain that intent, that is what we will create and get. So set your vision, purpose, choose focus and practice doing towards what you want to manifest and it will happen. A side note here, you might want to work from the outside in. What do you want in the eco village? Create all of those parts, compost toilets and, and little um, efficient stoves and, and housing and all of the things that you would require in, a, in an eco village on your little yellow brick road heading towards it until you have a complete eco village. Like break it up into steps and journey towards it. And that will manifest it a lot easier than having this huge vision that you, you doubt that you're going to receive. And, it, and if you doubt, you basically have just denied yourself the manifestation of that reality. So never doubt. Be fully focused on your intent and believe that it's possible. Any comments? I think that's a brilliant thing is if you want something, believe that it can happen. Believe in yourself and believe in the universe around you. Excellent, Brendan. Thanks. Alex? 100% agree. All right. Synchronicity, timelessness, and time basis of reality. Everything is relative. Synchronicity is also experienced in meditation, being in the now, being one with the flow, or in dream states. I've experienced long periods of time while involved in what I was doing for days and even weeks on end. You might say I was lost in time, totally focused on what I was doing, lost in the synchronicity of movement for extended periods of time made me oblivious to the passing of time or what is perceived to be the passing of time. I've also experienced the timelessness and motion of relatively synchronistic movement while surfing. When you're riding a wave and the tube is breaking over you, the speed at which the tube is actually breaking and the speed at which you're traveling 30 to 40 miles an hour, I've heard, along the wall, it's all happening at exactly the same time. And you, you get this feeling of timelessness because of the absolute synchronicity of the movements of the breaking wave and your movement along the wave. So just like everything else, which is all composed of motion, moving in synchronicity and harmony is perceived to be relatively timeless. So our perception of time is not time at all. It's scientifically proven that there is no absolute universal time. Time is just the abstract mathematical measurement of relative movements in space. In our relative movement reality, time is based on a Babylonian chosen base 60 number system used to create the minutes and the seconds. And the units of measure being one, sorry, and the unit of measure being one second, which is seemingly based on relative planetary motion and number systems. The duodecimal base 12 and the sexagesimal time base 60 number systems. One Earth's revolution is divided into 360 degrees. Six six is the 36, 360 degrees. So six times this, okay, forget that. Based on the Babylonian mathematical choice of the divisor of the 
planet's circumference. Time is related in some way to the speed of Earth's rotation relative to the sun. Every 15 degrees takes one hour. 360 degrees divided by 15 equals 24 units. Rotation increments converted into time increments. It takes 24 hours per rotation of the Earth. Two times 12 equals day and night, and oversimplification, of course. Each, which is not the same in various places on the planet, it's just a generalization. Each hour is divided into 60 minutes. Each minute is divided into 60 seconds. The second is the base unit of time. It's important to note that one degree of rotation is not equal to one second. The sleight of hand happens with the choice of number systems and the increments of angular motion and then their conver conversion into their randomly chosen time increments. And now we believe angular motion is time and not relative rotation. The lesson here is to take nothing for granted. Question everything. Any, any comments? Um, if we had gone with another calculation, what could it have been? It could be any units. It could be like we chose hours to be like what we would consider to be like uh, five hours could be like one hour. You know, the, the, the units of measure could have been anything. Um, we could have taken our days to be one hour. You know, we could have made it any units of measure. But you see, the thing is, angular motion is movement. And making the, the, the idea of time replace relative movement is like, is like we've been hoodwinked in that what we perceive to be time is relative movement. I'll go on to explain this, so just bear with me and I'll go on. So the heartbeat of our planet is to me the 24 hour periods experienced by us as day and night, spinning around one complete revolution as the earth rotates around the sun. In the Julian cycles of 365 and a quarter times a year. Now, there are different time base, different uh, numbers of days and, and calibrations of that which were adopted when different kings were in power. So I, I, I wish I had have written it down so I, I would have then been able to quote them, but I didn't. So in the Julian cycles of 365 and a quarter times per year, because it is not an exact number of days, mathematics would require parts of where there are no parts in the continuous motions, no beginnings and ends of units in the, the, the number of rotations happening around the planet. It, it would be really nice if it was like these perfect units of days, um, but it doesn't work out like that. There's this extra sort of amount, this quarter, which they have to now uh, calculate. In the Julian system, they... They basically, every four years, they change it from 365 to 366 days to accommodate for those quarters that make up a, another day. So it, it's not, it's not a, a perfect measurement of days. And um, there are other incremental calculations that, that improve the accuracy of the, uh, the systems. So it's not a perfect system. You can see mathematics having to adjust for the imperfection of their assumptions. 
So as a composition or a symphony of combined movement patterns on our planet and in our perceived reality, our time movement, time-based reality is vastly slowed down in relation to the speed of light of the electromagnetic vibrations of space that compose our whole reality. It's like all of this energy is coming in and becoming part of this reality, but our perception of this reality and our time base is based on that composition, not the individual vibrations that compose that reality. We know everything is moving relative to everything else. Its physical presence is an expression of where it is vibrating in space together with other vibrations. So it's this combination of vibrations which makes up our reality, which we perceive as having a different time base. The medium of the universe out there, the, the expanses of space, just vibrates and returns to equilibrium. So energy comes, space is still, energy comes, it vibrates, it passes through, and space returns to equilibrium in either vibrational direction. So positive direction, negative direction, and then maybe even like an oscillation afterwards, but it returns to equilibrium. In either vibrational direction around stillness, balance, and homeostasis. The vibrations energy passes through connected electromagnetic space and returns to stillness, thus returning to timelessness. Our physical world, presence and existence, is like a, a story. It's like a dream. It's like a symphony of combinations of vibrations forming our world and everything that's happening. It is a dynamic, moving, patterned, combined disturbance of the stillness of space, moving through space as a symphony of vibrations of neutral, timeless space. What we perceive as our physical world is just relatively localized and relatively stationary to us. We perceive that living things are moving and changing faster relative to the rest of the non-physical world around us. And similar to us, living things have different speeds of relative movements and changes biological and behaviorally. You can think of a sloth as like really moving slowly and then you can think of a jaguar sprinting very fast and us somewhere in between. So we think of material, of material existence as dead and, and moving and self-controlled things as alive. We might not easily perceive something as moving, changing, vibrating, expanding, and contracting, and so on. However, everything has rates of change and relative motion. Everything has comparable relative rates of change and movement. Thus. Everything has its relative perceivable time base of change. We know this because we know everything is composed of energy, vibrating at the speed of light at the subatomic realm. And Sun said, everything composed of vibrations. We also know that everything is vibrating, rotating, and flying through space at extreme speeds relative to space. We also know that our world and our environment is a living, life-giving, and sustaining reality. That's why we refer to it as Mother Earth. Without our living planet, our lives do not exist. And yet we perceive rocks stationary and unchanging relative to us. Thus, having a very long perceived time base of changes, and thus being non-living. However, we do this out of context of perceiving them as being parts of the whole composition of the living ecosystem of Mother Earth. It's like taking your cells of your body and seeing them as a separate thing and not part of you as a living organism. 
And we think this way because we're conditioned to believe we live in a material world made of separate things. Even though we know that rocks are also expanding and contracting with the intake and the release of the sun's energy, light, heat, and other frequencies from all over space, they receive and emit energy all the time as they are heating and cooling, expanding and contracting. Just the entering and exiting light energy is why we see the rocks with our eyes. However, we cannot see those relatively small physical expansion and contraction changes happening with our visual sensory limitations. We also do not see the extraordinary planetary life changes happening all the time unless we slow down, become one with the flow, become more observant, and use time-lapse photography and time-lapse video. Perceiving these changes reminds me of my numerous daily visits to the beach while in Costa Rica on a self-healing trip away from toxic America. Slowing down, I was perceiving the extraordinary changes that were and still are happening all the time. To the unobservant, nothing has changed. It's still a beach and it'll be there, the beach will be there for a long time into the future. They don't see the, the shells and the, the life forms growing and moving and, and the water and the, 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 the changes in the sand and the, the little waves in the sand and and how that's constantly changing. So much is happening. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing what is happening on the beach every single moment of every day. It's this incredible process. We live in a dynamic, magical, living, changing world. And most of us don't even know it. And life is this magical and precious gift that has to be lived to the full while you can to actually know it. Try it for yourself. Walk and see more. Sit still and observe and perceive the details. Daydream and meditate and be in the flow and fully experience the reality of your existence within this incredible living world, connect or remain disconnected. The choice is yours. Our world and all life are intimately connected in relationships with everything else and everything you think, say, and do. If you live in love, balance, and harmony and in alignment with Mother Nature, at the same time on Mother Earth, you will have a fantastic future ahead of you. If not, you and all life will suffer and become extinct. The choice is in your hands. So what do you choose? Any comments? I choose love, I would say. Yeah. Living it to the full, you know, really sort of experiencing it and engaging in life is like, that's the secret, you know. Alex, anything? No? You're not feeling well? I'm not feeling well. Okay. So I'm just going to forge on. It's time for you to choose a love-based life on Earth that we all deserve to live in. Life on Earth is a composition of relationships, balances, and symbiotic flows of energy information. Are you part of the symphony of life and one with the living vibrating flow of mother nature or are you not? Said differently, life on earth is all about living in love, balance and harmony and in alignment with mother nature's creative force and flow. That's why everything we think, say and do matters 
And by changing who you are and how you live your life, you can either be helping to save our world by creating a better world or destroying it. If you choose to become someone that doesn't support life and our world, you're destroying life and yourself just through the process of living your old, conditioned, indoctrinated, destructive, disharmonious way of life. Are you a thinker or a believer? Are you a sower of seeds and a nurturer and a creator of a better living world? Or are you a killer and destroyer? Are you an empath who cares about others and shares with all others? Or are you a selfish, egotistical taker who cares about yourself and your own? Or maybe you're somewhere in between and need to learn to care more for others, all life, and our earth before it dies. And it's too late for all of us. Bear in mind that dead is dead. Extinction is extinction. Over is over. The fire is out. The flow of the flames extinguished. The end of the vibrational energy flows. The end of the symphony, the music of life. So choose mindfully and do things differently. Our whole world only exists in love, balance and harmony and flowing in alignment and in relationships together if we all choose to live that way. Either we all play the game or we destroy the essential relationships and balances of life that make life possible and pleasurable in this world. Living in a love-based world requires love. Living in a giving and receiving world requires giving and receiving. Living in a balancing world requires balancing. Living in a harmonious world requires that we live in harmony with one another and our world and flow together. Living in a connected world requires conscious connectedness and healthy, happy relationships with everyone and everything. Living in an unpolluted world means not polluting and cleaning up our mess. We've got a lot of work to do. Living in a healthy world requires living a healthy way of life. Living in a sustainable world requires the constant investment of your time, your energy, and your effort into sustainability practices. You see, Life's strength against extreme changes and the, the resilience of our world is in its complexity, the diversity of complex ecosystems. Your personal strength and resilience are in your knowledge, your skills, consciousness, wisdom, and your adaptability. You will not survive if you're a specialist in one particular thing. You need to become a Renaissance man or woman, somebody who's, who's adaptable and, and flexible and able to adapt to changes because changes are coming and they're coming fast. You see, destroying and, and killing biodiversity, sorry, destroying and killing the biodiversity of our world means our world is becoming weaker and life more vulnerable to change and the closer to the end of all life on earth. You see, right through all of the major changes in history, the biodiversity of the planet was the reason why life thrived and was able to make it through those changes. Remaining stuck in your unconsciousness or in unconsciousness is killing you, humanity, all life, and our living world on Mother Earth. Think about that. If we do not adapt to change like we are proposing and we're stuck in a paradigm, 
we won't survive. Our remaining existence depend upon a great number of us, the great number of us, embracing change and making it happen. For those who are trying to reduce the population, you are making the biggest mistake you possibly can. We need to get humanity all working together to create this wonderful better future. Do you choose to be part of our fundamental movement to bring real change to our world and help us create an equitable, happy, healthy, and sustainable future for all life on earth? If so, tell others about us and help us to spread this vitally important truth and wisdom around the world before it is too late. All right, any comments? Yeah, I just want to say to all the people out there that are listening to the videos that we've got to wake up, we've got to start going with the movement or else the movement may not be there one day. It's guaranteed it won't if we don't change. From my life's experience and from my knowledge and from what I've learned and what I've taken you through in this whole journey, it's very, very, very clear that the trajectory that mankind is on is leading to absolute extinction. You can see with the rate that we have the highest extinction rate since the dinosaurs. We, we are literally racing ourselves because human, humans depend on all other life for existence and we're wiping all other life out. And just that one concept alone, there, there are many of them, many tipping points, but just that one concept alone, without the biodiversity, we don't survive. And we're killing all of the biodiversity. So we're guaranteed not to survive unless we change our way of life. So there's some, there may, and we've, we've gone through those things many, many times. But, uh, and by the looks of it, we have one generation, if that much, maybe two or three, before we, we've run out of time, before it's over, before the flame of life on this planet is out. So <laughs> this is not just a, a, you know, oh, yeah, okay, well, we've heard you now, let's just forget about the move on with our lives. It's like, no, this is the most important wake-up call that you could ever hear, and you really, really need to hear it. Alex? Um, I just want to read this movie quote. Give me a moment. There was this quote in this movie I watched a while back, um, and it basically says, a good man draws a circle around himself and cares for those within it, his woman, his children. Other men draw a larger circle and bring within their brothers and sisters. But some men have a great destiny. They must draw a circle around themselves, a circle that includes many, many more. I love that. But I think great, great humans would draw a circle around the whole universe, <laughs> including all of life, all planets, all stars, all, all whatever, all, all the way through down to Mother Earth and everything, well, realizing think, that you know, we are one. Our generation at this moment, this is the generation of change. Uh, this is the time for change. This is the year of Aquarius. This generation is the generation that needs to include the world. And everything that we are, um, we are causing impact upon, a negative impact upon, and change it for the positive. It's only in that, and only in, in connecting and bringing all that we connect with within our circle before we can truly bring about change. I love that. Thank you. All right, I've got one more section that I would like to read through. 
your journey to awareness, consciousness, wisdom, and enlightenment, to becoming a wise, intuitive, universally connected guide is a journey. This journey could take many lifetimes, and it can be an accelerated journey, as we have been teaching here. Some people are just born as essential energy or energy or spiritual beings that are far along on their journey. It is said that some of the most well-traveled, wise and enlightened beings are old souls. And I have heard that many Africans are old souls. And if you think about that, it's very logical because of the origins of human life originating from Africa. Having lived many, many lifetimes, others come from ancient indigenous cultures with an intimate connection to nature and all life. Some currently living cultures raise their children to become intimately connected to nature. Some use dreams and intuition and storytelling in their cultures. Thus, they raise their children to be more consciously connected to reality. Many energy, spiritually connected, living beings are often those who cannot function within Western society, are very far along their journey. Most of us are somewhere in between. Some of the most unconscious are the true believers in the religions, the ownership of society, governments, capitalism, and all of the systems within those systems, and all involved in that Western way of life, infected by the disease of the mind and the consciousness that's killing our world. Then some are trying to improve and are practicing, living in the now, breathing techniques, meditation, healthy living practices, dream living, and all the other methods taught here, who are doing their best. Then some are very skilled at being one with it all. I don't see anyone as being better or more evolved or further along than any other. They're just at some stage of their journey. Only at different stages of their energy journey, their spiritual journey. I don't like the use of the word spiritual, but I'm just using it to, to show you that I have chosen energy to replace the word spiritual. So never look down on the homeless or indigenous cultures worldwide because they might be way more in tune with the natural reality than you are. Try sleeping under the stars every night and in nature, and you'll find you have a much, much better connection to nature than somebody who's sleeping in a comfortable house um, and, uh, and insulated from actually living in nature. Many humans are stuck, though, stuck in their immature states of mind because of addictions and indoctrination, who have not taken responsibility for their lives, faced their life's challenges, become more mature and wise. This is humanity's fatal flaw at the moment. We're totally disconnected. Are you ready to step up to your true potential, face your challenges, Learn, change, transform, and evolve your consciousness through living and mastering your states of consciousness, your consciousness, and your life. Knowing you will receive what you're ready to receive only when you have changed and are prepared to receive the following states of consciousness will you receive them. As you practice and mature and become more responsible, loving, giving, and receiving, and living in love, balance, and harmony, connectivity, oneness, 
in alignment with the flow of the creative life force of Mother Nature? Will you achieve these more mature states of consciousness? As in Maslow's requirements of needs for your survival and so on, before you can rise in your levels of needs to self-actualization, you're required to travel the journey of development. Because unless you have fulfilled what comes before, you will not progress to the next stage in your essential energy, energy, growth, and or development. This journey of self-mastery, connectivity, wisdom, enlightenment, and practicing all of these energy practices is a journey a process of growth, of maturity. It is your conscious connectivity, awareness, skills, relationships, etc., growth journey. There is either existence or non-existence. Either we exist to sustain and perpetuate life, or we don't, and life ceases to exist. What do you choose, existence or not? We're all in this together. Ensuring the life lives in a fair, happy, healthy, and sustainable future is not only about your existence and your quality of existence. Everything is connected and interdependent. What happens to you and what you do affects everyone and everything else around you. This reminds me of Ernest Hemingway's epic story of the Spanish Revolution. Don't ask for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for you. That statement originally came from an essay by John Donne. But the, the concept of if a clod of mud washes off the continent of England, you are lesser for it. So in other words, if anything happens to any or all life or any life or anything in our world, it has, or if any species dies or animal dies, it all affect, it affects you because everything is connected. It's one whole symphony. It's one whole story. It's one whole song. You take away an instrument or a storyline or a song or whatever, and life is less. The more you take away, the less there is. And the magic of life decreases. Every vibration, beat, note, instrument, musician, symphony, voice, singer, melody, song, movement, dancers, living and non-living being, compose the symphony of our existence of life. Are you singing along to make that life symphony the best you it could be for yourself your children all life now and into the future are you a composer creator or destroyer that's the choice you have to make i choose to create a love balance and harmony and alignment with the flowing vibrating symphony of creation of mother nature what about you What about you? Anyone? Oh, absolutely. I love that analogy. I think that really speaks true to my soul of, you know, are you a composer or are you a destroyer? I think that's amazing. Thank you. Brennan? Well, first of all, I choose to create, and I'll try on a daily basis to do that. As a human, I do slip up. We all do. However, as long as you're creating more than what you're destroying, you are on the right path. I'm not saying that it's good to destroy at all. I'm just saying that as long as you're creating a lot more than what you're destroying, you're in the right direction. Let's put it that way. I like that. Yeah. If you like creating as much as you're destroying, you're, you're not making headway. 
but like you say, if you're doing, if you're creating more than you're destroying, you're making some headway. And if you're creating, creating, creating without destroying, then you're making a lot of headway. And if everyone is doing the creating, creating, creating together, then we're creating at an incredibly accelerated rate because one creation combined with another creation is, is like multiplied out in its effect. And bam, before we know it, we can change our world. We honestly can. But it really requires that commitment to creation and becoming the creators of the magnificent world that we all deserve to. And, and our children and all life, past, present, and futures has all been striving to achieve. And just in this, I don't know, this last modern history, we've been going against that just to make a few rich. It's like, what are we doing? What, where did we lose the plot? So let's strive to be like the best creators that we can be. All right. That's where I'm going to stop. I have a section of notes which we'll put into next week's meeting just to help us with life skills and techniques that are really important. It's things that have come up that I just want to clarify for us. So that is basically the end of my book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance, The Quest for the Truth, Change and Transformation. And then, of course, what comes next is also one of the discussions we will have on now. So thank you, everyone, for attending. It's like, this has been wonderful, been a wonderful journey. And I hope we manage to, well, I, I think now one of the big things is making sure we manage to get this all out there. Any final comments? No, I think we just should just take a minute just to think about, you know, if everybody had to watch this series tomorrow, everyone around the world, if they had to watch this series tomorrow, just what kind of conversations the next day we would have with everybody on the planet, just the people, the relationships, the changes that would happen overnight. If we just take a moment just to see it as, as it could be tomorrow, um, if change was made tonight. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then it's, it's been it is an amazing. Karen? It's been an amazing journey and um, it's been an amazing series of thoughts and processes and changes. I know I've changed a lot over the past two years going through this journey. And I know a lot of people around me too have changed. And I can only hope and pray that change continues into the future and that all the changes that we need and want to happen, happen. Yeah, I agree. So that really brings it to how do we get it out there? Yeah, absolutely. That's the next uh, epic question, right? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing is, is, is never to give up and never stop striving. And uh, I think we've got the foundation here. I mean, really, this, this is like the beginning basics. And uh, just imagine where we can go from here. All right, Brendan, any last comments? Yeah, I just want to say to all our viewers, thank you very much for joining us on this journey. And to all the people that participated, thank you very much. However, just keep in mind the journey isn't done. We're done with a small portion of it. <laughs> and even then, it's even once we are completed with all the books, all the journeys, all that, it's never done from your behalf. And I just wanted to put out there and I don't know if you agree with it but if we can have contributions from anyone to help start an eco village that will be fantastic so that we can get this movement going and then teach people what it's like to live off the land cool that's a brilliant way to end thanks Brennan 
Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, uh, Bryn and Alex, for this wonderful meeting. Um, and if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window, the Zoom window, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Brendan.